Really, it began while I was in service. And Sally, my wife, was taking a beautician course that was stationed in D.C. And uh, right across the hall from her class was a typewriter class on typewriter repair. So that's where it started. And that was 60, 1960. I had the privilege of working my way up with Royal Typewriter. And that was instructing classes all over the United States, three week classes. And I had two small children, that just didn't work. So they gave me an ultimatum, either transfer into other states as manager, service manager, or either leave. We wanted to treat other people the way we were treated. And a customer of mine was not just a customer, they were a friend. If they gave me their business, I felt like I was more than obligated to them just business-wise. I looked at them as a friend. When we started the office equipment business, like we said, we were in a tool shed in the back of our house and uh, he uh, would run service calls with his little Volkswagen service car and uh, then he would you know, come home and fix the typewriters at night and then take them back the next day. When my father first started the business, it was my father. It was just him. And he would go out every day. There was never a sick day. He would go out, service typewriters, and come home. He'd bring typewriters home with him. To run a small business is definitely not a eight hour job. And you've got to realize that what you make is what you eat. Well, he's always been a person that um, is very um, determined to uh, succeed in any, anything that he does, really. It took, uh, I think it was about nine years before he had the first vacation. But hey, hey look, it worked. Tina was working downtown for a large company and Sam uh, came to work with us in the summer when he was in high school uh, and worked part-time and then uh, I was blessed to find out about Mike uh, and he, he was a very good service tech and uh, so it worked into a family business. I am so glad it did turn out that way but I never dreamed. I never dreamed, not that I'm negative, but I never dreamed it would be where it's at today. So I had to go out and buy a tie and I think I borrowed a jacket. I didn't have new shoes on, but I, I figured I could polish those up decent enough to come in for an interview. So I came in for the interview and he hired me. That was in 1980. I think back, 40 years of my life has been at Stones. 38, I've been part of that family. My dad said, you know, your mom's ready to cut back some. Maybe we should, you know, if you ever entertain the thought of coming here, it's closer to home, you'd have a little bit more freedom um, with the children. And so, you know, Mike and I talked about it and um, I had been downtown for over 20 years and just decided in summer of 91 to come to work with my mom so she could cut back a little bit. And I stepped in and realized, you know, I've got more skin in the game than I thought I would. I mean, I'm a stone, so everybody watches me and says, watch what he's doing because he's a direct representation of the leadership there. And so then I realized, you know, what is it that makes stones tick? What is it that people really enjoy about stones office equipment? Because as I went out into customers' offices, I realized, you know, like, when they see us coming, it's, it's a whole new level of excitement. Even if it's a service call, they're glad that we're the ones coming out. And so I started to realize that like, service is the key to everything. The tenure of our employees is about 15 years. And uh, we're, we're proud of that because we want them to feel like they have a place to come to work where um, it's more than just a job. It's something that uh, uh, they're contributing back to their community or um, providing for their family for. We have such personal relationships with our um, employees. They really are like family and we take a good interest in what they have going on without meddling. And um, you know, our life is kind of in a fishbowl so they kind of know all about us too.
Yeah. I hear it over and over. I don't care where I go. People say, oh, you are the stone. I said, I'm one of the stones. I don't have any idea what they're selling, really. I mean, I can say copy machines or post machines or something like that, but what in depth? That's their bag. I carried mine.